Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee, with your daily devotion. Reading today from Charles Coulson's 1997, I think it is, uh, classic work called Loving God, a book he um, published all the way back then. This is a selection uh, called Ultimate Surrender, and it's a part of a compilation uh, daily devotional called How Great Is our God, which I have read from, it's got uh, selections by uh, the Black Bees, Charles Colson, Sinclair Ferguson, Andrew Murray, J.I. Packer, uh, John Piper, Sproul, Tozer, Dallas Willard, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Really a great collection. This one, as I say, is uh, uh, from Loving God. It, it, it was a very important book back then and uh, sort of stirred the church, awakened the church, if you will, to its need for holiness and surrender uh, to the Lord. And coming from a guy like Charles Colson, who knew what it meant to, to sin quite a bit and to be redeemed uh, all the more and uh, to have received God's grace, mercy, and forgiveness like he did. It's just amazing. This is a, a little selection called Ultimate Surrender. Um, he starts it with a, the quote from um, uh, one of the seven letters to the seven churches in the book of Revelation. You'll remember our study of the book of Revelation together. And if you, if you love studying books of the Bible and would like to study the book of Revelation, I highly recommend visit our, our YouTube channel or our website, thevillagechapel.com. And you can uh, download and listen to all of those studies, including when we studied this letter to the church at Sardis, the ancient church in Sardis. That was an uh, ancient area called Asia Minor. We call it Turkey nowadays. And uh, in that letter, uh, the Lord says to the church at Sardis, remember then what you received and heard. Keep it and repent. And there's that word, repent, that... Uh, uh, that it sort of sounds religious and old, and sometimes we don't really know what it means. Charles Coulson's going to help us out. Repentance is much more than regret, says Coulson. More than deep sorrow for past sins, the biblical word for repentance literally means a change of mind. One church scholar describes it as, quote, that mighty change in mind, heart, and life wrought by the Spirit of God, end quote. So there it is, a, a work of God in our hearts. He grants us the faith that leads to repentance, the New Testament tells us. And so Colson goes on, thus repentance is replete with radical implications for a fundamental change of mind not only turns us from the sinful past, but transforms our life plan our values, our ethics, and actions as we begin to see the world through God's eyes rather than ours. That kind of transformation requires the ultimate surrender of self. And Coulson's just really brilliant. Uh, he's a skilled logician. Uh, you know, his logic is good, it's solid. And um, he says here, the call to repentance, individual and corporate, is one of the most consistent themes of Scripture. The demand for repentance is clear in God's command to Moses, and its brokenhearted reality and passion flows through David's eloquent prayer of contrition, as we read about it in Psalm 51, for instance, yes. It is the consistent refrain of the prophets, literally throughout the Old Testament. That's what we, we see the, and read about the, the prophets uh, uh, pointing out sin, clarifying what sin is in God's eyes. And that's so important, isn't it? That we have a clear understanding of who defines sin and how it is defined by that person who really is the only one that has a right to define sin. That's God himself. And it's throughout scripture, the call to repentance. And uh, it's actually uh, one of the most welcome things about the Bible and about the 
the Christian gospel is that the Lord calls us to repentance. And it's not just, you know, sort of one of these kind of fear things. It's actually a, a joy for us. Why? Well, because we know God's response to our repentance. He is eager for us to come to him in repentance, eager to forgive us and restore us. Colson goes on to say, repentance is the keynote of the New Testament as well. It is John the Baptist's single message. And here he quotes it from Matthew chapter three. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And according to Mark's gospel, says Colson, repent and believe in the gospel. And gospel, I'll remind you, means good news. I love that, right? Repent and believe in the good news, okay? And these were among Jesus' first public words that we have recorded in the Gospels. His last earthly instruction to his disciples included the directive, quote, that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. And that's from Luke 24, 47, as Jesus prepares to ascend back into heaven, that's exactly what he tells his disciples, that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Doesn't matter where you're from. Doesn't matter how far you have run. Doesn't matter what you've done. Repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name, that means we turn to Jesus if we want that. We turn away from our sin. Repentance is a twofold turn. Turn away from our sin, turn toward Jesus. And we receive this forgiveness of sins. And that's what we're to be declaring before all nations, including the one that we live in right here. So in our homes, in our neighborhoods, at our place of work, we should be a repenting people. People that repent joyfully, receiving God's forgiveness, grace, and mercy. He goes on to say, Colson does, repentance is an indispensable part of the conversion process that takes place under the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. But repentance is also a continuing state of mind. Believers are told, for example, to, quote, prove their repentance by their deeds, close quotes, and that's from Acts chapter 26. And so there is a sense in which, as he defined it, he gave us that definition early on in this reading, that repentance is a change of mind, but it leads to a change of heart and a change of direction, if it's true repentance. It also leads to receiving God's forgiveness, believing God is who he said he is, that he's a forgiving God. That, uh, that he desires, eagerly desires to forgive you and to forgive me, uh, no matter what we've done. And uh, we just need to turn to him and receive from him this grace, mercy, and forgiveness in Jesus' name. Well, Colson closes out this little selection from his book, Loving God. If you haven't read it before, great book, uh, awesome. Uh, highly recommend it to you. But this one selection from it, um, in this collection called How Great Is Our God, closes out this way. Without a continuing repentant attitude, a persistent desire to turn away from our own nature and seek God's nature, Christian growth is impossible. Loving God is impossible. So if we truly desire to love God, as the title of Colson's book, Loving God, what does it look like to love God? Um, it, it begins with recognizing that he's God and we're not, that he's holy and we're not, and that we need his forgiveness, his grace and his mercy. And he's made that available to you and to me. You want to delight the heart of God this morning or this day? Turn to him in repentance and faith, believing. Charles Colson, his book, Loving God, excerpted here in How Great Is Our God, the daily devotional. Let me close in prayer. Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, and the forgiveness that is on offer to us because of the finished work of Christ on the cross. 
Lord, I pray that for each and every one of us, you'd grant us the faith this morning to believe in you, to believe you are who you say you are, and that we might receive from you this grace, mercy, and forgiveness in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey. Thank you.